Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing well today. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a few protocols on the Polygon network. Given how all the farming that I was doing on Polygon was insulated from this recent sell-off, I figured it'd be a good time to cover a few protocols that my Discord members and I are farming on. And if you want to learn about these protocols before I publish the video, I highly recommend that you guys go ahead and check out my Discord channel. Within that Discord, I have an entire section dedicated to DeFi farming. It's a great forum for everybody to share thoughts, insights, get support, and connect with like-minded individuals. But if you're not into Discord, at the very least, I would recommend joining me on Twitter. By giving me a follow, you'll learn about the yield farms that I'm interested in, and you'll get industry highlights in real time. Whether you wanna join my Discord channel or give me a follow on Twitter, you can find the relevant links in the description below. With the intro out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into this video. So the first protocol that we're going to cover today is PolyZap. And towards the end of the video, I'll show you guys exactly how I go about finding these protocols. This way, if you have the time and the motivation, you guys can look for these protocols on your own. Majority of the protocols out there, they tend to be AMMs or auto compounders. Like I've told you guys in past videos, I think automated market makers are the base layer of DeFi. And that's what we're kind of seeing in the market. They'll come out with an AMM and in almost all cases, they'll be forks of other AMMs. The main differences tend to be the tokenomics, the fees that they charge, and occasionally here and there you'll see an AMM add additional services like borrowing and lending. PolyZap here is going to be an automated market maker, and their fee for swaps is going to be 0.25%, 0.17% of that is going to be returned to liquidity pools, and 0.08% is going to be sent to a treasury. I'm not a big fan of 0.08% going to a treasury and just sitting there. If I were the team, I would amend this. Instead of going to the treasury, I would either keep it in the pool or use it to buy ZAP tokens off the market and burn them. This way that capital is immediately deployed and put to productive use. Just like many other AMMs, they have pools where you can deposit single-sided liquidity and you can earn a nice yield paid in ZAP. They also have some very nice farms. Their native token PZAP is paired with six different assets, including two stable coins, which is pretty unique in itself. You don't see that very often. And assuming that the pools get deep enough, it'll sort of act as a hedge because when the market takes a dip, their stable coin pairs will act like a padding to make sure that it doesn't retrace too significantly. And when we're in a bull market, a lot of these other tokens like ETH, Quick, BTC, Matic, when they rally, they'll help prop up the price of the PZAP token. And if we scroll down, you'll see some other interesting pools here with robust APRs. I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't know about these APRs here. Otherwise, we would see them get diluted pretty quickly. Whether it's Linkmatic, WBTCmatic, Unimatic, or Avematic, I think. I believe once the market starts to recover, all of these pairs will do well. And if you're not interested in getting exposure to PZAP, you could easily farm these tokens here and dump them if you want without getting exposure to them. The emissions rate for the token isn't very high. It's only one PZAP per block. They're gonna cap the supply at 21 million. And to add some deflationary pressure to the token, they've come up with these games that people can play. Winners will get large reward distributions and a portion of the tokens that are paid to play the game will end up being burned. For now, most of the burning comes from King Zap and Wheel of Zap, but in the future, they're gonna introduce Zap Lottery where a portion of the winnings are gonna be burned. They're gonna introduce auto compounding vaults, which will use a portion of the fees to buy back and burn PZAP periodically. And lastly, instead of sending that 0.08% to the treasury, they might end up just using it to buy back and burn PZAP. They also have a healthy amount of activity in their Telegram channel. They have over 2,200 members and are engaged with the community. In DeFi, it's really important to cultivate and develop a strong community. And it's part of my framework for assessing a lot of these DeFi protocols because having a very robust and engaged community is a huge asset. Oftentimes they'll address any FUD that's out there in social media. They'll aggressively buy all and any dips. They'll publish content they'll advocate for the project. And if you have devs in the community, they'll also build analytics tools or help with the UI. So for those reasons, the size and the quality of the community is very important. The next project I want to bring to your guys' attention is BlackSwap. They originally started out as BlueSwap on the Binance Smart Chain, and they had a difficult time growing their TVL. 
So they decided to make a strategic move by expanding into Polygon. And it looks like part of the motivation was to make it easier for people to farm cross chain. And additionally, the low gas prices of the Matic chain make it easier for them to develop more features. And they even launched with a new token called Aurora. It has two base pairs, USDC and Matic. And currently they only have single sided pools that you can provide liquidity to. They recently reduced the fees across the board. So instead of paying a 4% deposit fee, like on many other platforms, you could pay a 1% deposit fee to enter any of these staking pools. They also got this solar farm that's set to launch this Friday. I'm not going to cover this much in this video, but it's tokenomics is very similar to SafeMoon. And if they end up launching farms, they should provide for some very robust yields. And if you're a fan of Krill or you're farming on Polywill, get ready because through a partnership with Polywill, they're going to be opening a Krill slash USDC pool on Thursday. And personally, I'm anticipating a very robust yield when this comes out. And for the remainder of the quarter, they got a lot of interesting things lined up, like a bridge between BSC and the Polygon network. They got this multi-chain sketch box that allows users to get unique loot box rewards on both chains using BlueSwap. They're also going to introduce a lottery system and a launch pad. The current total value locked in the protocol is roughly 4 million, which is relatively nothing if you compare it to the rest of DeFi and other protocols. And to be honest, based on the research I've done, I can't say I'm a huge fan, but I think the team is trying very hard. Even though they weren't getting much traction on BSC, they decided to push forward and expand into Polygon in hopes of getting more success there. So to me, that kind of demonstrates that they are giving this a genuine effort. And since they offer one of the highest APRs on Krill, I decided to deposit a small portion of my Krill onto the protocol. The next farm we're gonna cover is Polycake. On launch, it's just gonna be like any other yield farming platform. However, it does have a very nuanced token model. It has this 0.3% reflex fee. So any transaction that happens, 0.3% fee is gonna be charged and the fee token will automatically be sent to a burn address. Its emissions rate is one P cake per block. It'll be used to stake, earn platform fees, and also governance sometime in the future. And sometime in the future, expect to see Polycake introduce their decentralized exchange. They'll be partnering with other projects. They're going to be building a Matic ETH token bridge. You can expect NFTs and more launch pools to come. And if most of this happens, there's a good chance that they'll be listed on a centralized exchange. And that tends to be the general life cycle of a lot of these DeFi tokens, is that they'll have a very obscure starting, nobody will know about them. But if the team delivers, they gain enough TVL, they gain enough popularity, and there's a decent demand for trading those tokens, then you'll see successive exchange listings. And here they kind of copied uh, PancakeSwap with the syrup pools, except here it's called Cake House Pools. It's an effort to encourage people to hold their PK tokens instead of dumping them. So if you deposit them here, you can earn WMATIC or DAI. And unlike the syrup pools on PancakeSwap where the average APR is 100%, you can see here you can earn over 1000% by staking your PK token. Here are the six farms that they have where you can earn some decent yield. And if you didn't want to subject yourself to impermanent loss, you can put your assets in single-sided pools like the ones you see here. The yields aren't the greatest at this moment, but they're pretty respectable. Their Telegram has over 1,800 members, and they have over 3,300 followers on Twitter. Obviously, this is still a very young protocol. They just came out this month, so it'll take a little time for us to formulate a proper assessment. And for that reason, it's probably one of the higher risk farms that I'm deploying my funds on. The next protocol I'm going to cover is Beefy.Finance. In addition to supporting Polygon, they're also supporting Phantom, Heco, Avex, and obviously BSC because that's where they started. Unlike some of the more expensive ones, this protocol only charges a 4.5% performance fee, which is great for people that aren't staking beefy tokens because they don't have to pay a hefty fee, but perhaps not so good for beefy stakers who would prefer a larger portion of the rewards distributed to them. Currently, they support LP positions from Aave, Cometh, Polywell, QuickSwap, SushiSwap, and with just these few protocols, they have a total TVL of 31.73 million. And I'd also like to highlight, in addition to the 4.5% performance fee, they also have this 0.05% to 1% withdrawal or deposit fee on all vaults. 
but still compared to some of the other auto compounding protocols, even with the deposit and withdrawal fees, it's still cheaper. So if you don't mind paying that small fee, this is a great place to deposit your LP and automatically compound all the rewards that you're earning. But just remember that APY is different from APR. This APY assumes that you're gonna be getting this daily APR for 365 days straight. And I can pretty much guarantee that's never going to happen. And they basically do this as a marketing tactic to lure in deposits. So make sure you guys calculate the APR for entering a pool. And if you're thinking about being an LP for a medium to long-term period, if you're in a quality pool, you can expect this yield to get diluted very quickly. So what I'm trying to say here is that if you're the type of person that likes to go from pool to pool, using the services offered by an auto compounding protocol like Beefy might not be the best choice for you. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and talk about Adamant. I've done a full video review on the platform. If, if you're interested in watching, I'll provide a link in the description below. But just like Beefy, they'll go ahead and auto compound your rewards. They charge a 30% performance fee and 100% of this goes to people staking Addy tokens. But unlike Beefy, they juice up the yields by giving you Addy tokens. So let's say you were to provide liquidity to this ETH slash DAI pool, your base APY will be 39% after they subtract the performance fee, and you'll get an additional 173% paid to you in Addy tokens. Now you are required to vest those Addy tokens for a certain period, or you pay a 50% penalty fee if you withdraw them early. So there's probably two reasons why you'd wanna use this over Beefy. Number one, you wanna get that additional yield paid to you in Addy tokens. And depending on which LP you use, even if you incur the penalty, farming Addy tokens and selling them might be more profitable than depositing your LP position on Beefy. Or secondly, maybe you like the protocol, what you're doing, and you're kind of medium to long-term bullish on it. So in that setting, you'd obviously wanna deposit your LP position here so you can maximize the return that you get in Addy tokens. And these last two protocols I'm going to bundle together. They were the first two protocols that I saw when I started farming here on Polygon. And in terms of TVL, they're definitely leaders. You have 80 million locked up in Polywell. You have 63 million locked up in Polycap. In some ways, they're very similar. For example, they both allow you to deposit the LPs to auto compound. They have farms, they have single sided pools. So you can make a pretty good argument about them being head to head competitors. Personally, I have more funds on Polywell. One of my buddies, through investing in yield farming, he managed to turn 2,000 into 70,000, and he put approximately 50,000 into this fish slash matic pool. And when the yield was approximately 900%, he was getting $3,000 a day in fish tokens. And he largely did that because this was one of the first few protocols that he encountered on Polygon. And he also liked the fact that the base pair or the most liquid pair for fish was Matic, which is great when Matic is going up because it'll help prop up the price of fish. And given that DeFi on Polygon was exploding, he decided that it would be better to bet on this protocol versus Polywell because for one, the governance token of the protocol has a very liquid pair with Matic. Additionally, he also liked the fact that they cap the maximum supply at 3 million. And unlike the krill token, which has an emission rate of one krill token per block, the emissions rate for fish is 0.8 tokens per block. And based on what he tells me about the community, he said that they're very engaged. There's a lot of people in the Telegram channel. And he was sort of impressed by that because as early as this project is, they were able to build a decent sized community very quickly. Personally, I decided to put most of my funds on Polywell, although part of my strategy is taking my Krill tokens that I'm earning and then sort of cross-pollinating across a few DeFi protocols. Because I noticed when I first started that a few different DeFi protocols supported the Krill token in a single-sided pool. And to me, that was an indication of the team reaching out to other projects and collaborating. I mean, we just saw that BlackSwap, for example, is gonna be introducing the USD slash Krill pool. All the auto compounding protocols out there support the Krill slash USDC pool. And even Polycat has a Krill pool. So even though their emission rate is higher and they don't have a cap imposed yet, 
the fact that you're able to farm with krill alone should reduce some of the buying pressure because you're going to have farmers who are getting krill depositing their tokens across various protocols and on top of that since they're not imposing a cap they're able to juice up their auto compounding rewards with the krill token and since they're able to juice up the yields of these auto compounding rewards with the krill token it shouldn't be a problem for them to have the highest rewards in the entire polygon ecosystem with that being said i think both protocols can coexist and i think it's really healthy to have as many competitors as possible because they'll be constantly trying to out innovate one another and as yield farmers will benefit tremendously from that competition and in the interest of not being tribalistic i decided to deposit a portion of my krill tokens to farm fish now to end the video i'm going to show you guys how i find these protocols early on the first thing you want to do when you get started is come over here to vfat.tools polygon not only is this a fantastic tool to see what your yields are and what your projected yields are going to be but since they're compiling all the protocols onto the polygon network it sort of gives you this bird's eye view of what's out there and just because a protocol gets listed here doesn't mean that they're rug proof or they're hack proof always always do your own research before investing in any of these protocols now most likely you won't see the protocol listed here the day it comes out to catch the protocol the day that it releases either you have to hear it from a friend a buddy an insider or you have to be very active and super vigilant typically when a project sends out its genesis tweet they'll use hashtags like polygon or matic so if you come over here to Twitter and you search hashtag Polygon or Matic and you scroll down the latest tweets, you'll have to get a little lucky, but you could potentially get into a protocol the day it launches. Obviously, there's a great deal of risk getting into a protocol the day that it launches, because typically what happens when a protocol launches, their native token will go up significantly. And as more people find out about the protocol, you'll see more people enter the single-sided pools. They'll yield farm aggressively and immediately begin to dump the token. So about 90% of the time, you'll see the token go up significantly in the first couple days, then have a huge retrace, find a floor, consolidate, and if it's a good quality project and they got the right tokenomics, then at some point you'll see the price recover in the future. There have been instances where I've come in on day one of farming, and within a couple days, I'll 5 to 10x my money. I'll sell most of my position for profit, wait for the retrace, and if I like the project or I think the project has prospect, then I'll go ahead and LP into the riskiest pair and just let it ride. And typically when I enter a new farm, I'll immediately share it with my private Discord channel. So if you're interested in learning about my moves in real time and catching them before I publish a video or a tweet, even if you join the lowest tier I have for $20 a month, you'll get access to all my private Discord channel. And if you feel like you're late to the game and there's a big learning curve, expedite your learning and take full advantage of the opportunities out there. If you join one of the higher tiers, you can gain access to me one-on-one. -on -one. If you think any of the services would benefit you, don't hesitate to check out the description below and click on my Patreon link. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is Crypto One Step signing up. I'll talk to you folks next time. Bye.